when we speak under the anointing power of God, that is like a prophetical utterance. Now, we love tongues, interpretation, and prophecy. I know that. I love it. I've had some prophecies recently that would knock my socks clear off, okay? And if I were to tell you some of the things that were told me, I would be embarrassed and you would be embarrassed, okay? So I won't say it. But some of the things God has in mind for this ministry are just outstanding. Awesome. But there is tongues, interpretation, and prophecy. Word of knowledge, word of wisdom. As you know, the word of knowledge means past and present. The word of wisdom means future, what God's going to do in your future. But there's another type of prophetical. That's preaching and speaking under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit as an oracle or a spokesperson for God. That's just as anointed and just as powerful as a prophetical utterance coming forth. So it's just the same, only it's in a different form. So God wants, so Peter, by the Holy Spirit, is telling the believers that when you do finally speak for God, or when you serve God, do it as an oracle of God, speak as a spokesperson for God, under the anointing, depending on God for that anointing, depending on God for the inspiration to say at that moment what needs to be said, even when you didn't know you were going to say it. Just like a moment ago when I told you I, I didn't plan to say all that. That's an inspiration. And what that does, it, it touches the hearts of the hearers. They'll say, well, how did he know that? That's what I'm going through today. How can he happen to speak that? Because the Lord already knows what we're going through today. And if the speaker is anointed by God, God will speak to that speaker, to the hearts of the people that need to hear what they need to hear. Yes. And that's what we call speaking as an oracle of God, by the inspiration of the Spirit. And uh, it's exciting. And in, I like the, also in the NIV, uh, the same verse in the NIV, it said, if anyone speaks... He should do it as one speaking the very words of God. Wow, that's, that's heavy this morning. If anyone speaks, he should do it as one speaking the very words of God. If anyone serves, he should do it with the strength God provides. Mm -hmm. So when you see us up here ministering, we're not doing it under our, our power our ability, but the ability of God through us. How many understand that today? Amen. People ask me, Pastor Mike, and I've been asked this many times, even overseas, how can you preach like you do? How do you get up there and talk to thousands of people? I couldn't do it before until I was filled with the Holy Spirit. Once I was filled with the Holy Spirit, this ability to speak began almost immediately in my ministry as a young man. And so I know that it is not me. It's a gift. This type of speaking extemporaneously or by inspiration, that's a gift that comes from God. I guarantee you that when you've heard me preach, especially those that have seen in the, group, the crusades and the conferences, I know that's not me doing that. Okay? It's, we're just merely a vessel, an instrument that God is using in those moments under that anointing. The key is to learn how to submit and yield to that anointing so that you can speak that way. So we are the spokesmen of God today in this world. I know that sounds boastful, but I don't mean it to be. But I like what it said, if anyone speaks, Peter said, he should do it, he should do it as, as one speaking the very words of God. And if anyone serves, he should do it with the strength that God provides. And I believe that with all my heart today. How many will say amen to that today? Amen to that. Now there's a key. Let's turn to Luke 4, 7, 4, 18 for a moment. There's a key. I want us to learn this today. One of the things I'm very pleased about this church is that our people are getting tremendous teaching from our preachers. I want you to know that. We, in Luke 4, 18, and then we'll look up here and we'll read it together. But I'm very proud of our speakers because I know they, first number one, they know the word. Okay? Number two, they're anointed. Number three, the people are learning as a result of that. He doesn't want it. We're learning some keys here today to, to speaking for God, spokesman. Now, you don't have to be an eloquent preacher, an, or, an orator that gives speeches in order to be effective. You can just be conversational, but if that conversation is anointed by God, it'll have a tremendous impact. Because some of you might be saying, yeah, but I can't be a preacher like you, Pastor. I can't speak like you. You don't have to. It's just the way you say things. 
It could be very penetrative. It could touch the heart of a person and transform their whole situation that day by one thing that you said. Something that you said can trigger something. And, it's in, and you can be an encourager. God wants us to be. You notice that's what Jesus did when he came on the scene. One, one of the things he did, that of course he spoke with authority. They, people were mesmerized by his, that's not, that's not a good word, but they were, let's say, fascinated when he spoke. I know that because how could he speak to fishermen who just came in from all night fishing, putting their nets away, get, bringing the boat in, putting stuff away, and he just stows, goes over there and says, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. And the Bible said immediately they left their nets and followed him. Now that doesn't happen every day. But with his compelling personality and walking under the anointing that he did and operating in the spirit that he has, the Holy Spirit, it drew men to him. He said, I will draw all men unto me. And he, and he does. That's why we were drawn. We heard the gospel by an anointed yes. preacher. Mm -hmm. We heard somebody share, even share from a conversation. But it drew something to it. It drew, it drew our attention. My gosh, this is what I need. I need to be saved. I need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You mean God could use me like that? And then when they find out, yes, he can, it changes our lives. Yes. You mean God can take care of the situation in my home, my family? Yes, your words can even alter the situation that day. You walk into a hospital room, just your presence, lay hands and pray. Like I said, if I can't be there, you lay hands on them. God's no respecter of persons. How many know that Thank today? you, Lord. He'll use you. He's not going to embarrass you. You lay hands on that person. You pray for them in Jesus' name. And God's going to honor your words because you're quoting His words, not yours. He honors His word. He will perform His word. He will not, he will not as I say, He will not embarrass you. God's never embarrassed us. I do not stand before thousands of people confidently and stand up there on a platform and tell them tonight the Lord's going to save you. Tonight He's going to heal you. Tonight He's going to anoint you with the Holy Spirit. I could not do that unless I knew that I was a spokesman for God at that moment and it was the Holy Spirit doing it. Amen. Thank you. Man. I couldn't do it. I'd be terrified to even come out on the stage. The real Mike would have probably not come on the stage. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, once I got out there, once the anointing came, I forgot about all the crowd. I forgot about everything. The word went forth. The word will go forth. We're the oracles of God today. Speak as if God were speaking. You know, when Moses came down from that mountain, remember, he went up to the mountain and talked to God. <laughs> Imagine an 80-year-old mountain, an 80-year-old man climbing up Mount Sinai, going up there. The Lord said, come up, Moses. Mm -hmm. <laughs> come up. How many know the climb was worth it? <laughs> <laughs> the climb was worth it. Being in the absolute presence of God. And God speaking to him, as the Bible says, as a man speaks to his friend. Wow. I, I like that. I would like that. I love that. Well, the Lord has spoken to us. We have heard His voice. Everybody in this room has heard His voice in one way or another. Maybe you didn't hear an audible voice out of the sky like Moses did, but you've heard Him speak to your heart. You've seen Him speak to you by the conditions and circumstances. Yes. You've heard Him speak to you while the message is going forth, while the teaching is going forth. He's talking to you. He's reaching your heart from the need that you have. But when He came down from the mountain... He came down as a spokesman for God. He didn't have to worry about the message. How many know God gave him the message? Amen. He didn't have to worry about, oh, what am I going to speak? What will I say? What will I do? I find myself doing that sometimes, even now after 47 years in the ministry, preaching the gospel all over the world. Sometimes I still find myself, oh, God, you're going to have to give me that message for next Sunday. Please give me. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. It's his message, not mine. If we'll go up there and talk to him up to the mountain again, how many know he'll give us the message? <laughs> and he'll give us the anointing to speak it forth with power and authority. And guess what happens? Lives will be changed. Things will begin to happen. The atmosphere will change. And my mother and dad, when they went to like Bible college and long before I was born, mother said when Sister Amy McPherson, the founder of the Four Square, that dynamic woman preacher, when she didn't even say anything, she walked into the room, the very room, the atmosphere changed. It was electrified. 
they came into another dimension. We've seen that a couple of times at a couple of the meetings. We were with another evangelist when he'd walk on stage. The atmosphere changed. Catherine Pullman, I was on stage with her. She walked in. Her face, it like something like a light bulb. I'm not kidding you. It glowed. I'm not, I'm not being, over, in fact, I'm underplaying it. I'm being conservative, what I'm saying. Her actual, her old being was in shining. And when she walked out on that platform, it wasn't, all she was was a woman about Adele's size. Thin lady, older lady, you would just, you would probably wouldn't notice her that much in the crowd. It's another, another lady, older lady. But when she came out on that platform, under that anointing, I'm telling you, those thousands of people that sat at the Shrine Auditorium, they were like this. They were mesmerized like that. Mm -hmm. This little lady, and she'd come out. She'd come out and say, I'm nothing. I'm nobody. But boy, the miracles, the healings. People instantly come out of wheelchairs. They've been in them for years, coming out of cots. And she just talked. Like I said, she wasn't even a dynamic preacher. Amy McPherson was a dynamic preacher as well as had a healing ministry. But even but Catherine Kuhlman wasn't even that. Yeah. But it's the way she talked. With that anointing, what happened, Pastor Mike? She became an oracle of God. His spokesperson. At that moment, and God backed her up. How do we know? that Moses was successful when he came down from the mountain. Oh, because of the reaction of the people. Mm -hmm. They said when he came down, his face shone so bright that he had to put a veil over his face. The people were frightened. And the Bible says in Exodus 34, they were afraid to approach him. Mm -hmm. They knew he'd been with God. Mm -hmm. They knew he had a message from God. It wasn't from this earth. It was above this earth. It came from the mountain. Mm -hmm. God decide, descended. And you know what? As he went up, God came down. Isn't that great? You know, the higher we get, he'll come down. And he'll talk to you. When you're discouraged, you're fight, frightened, or there's illness, or a loved one is suffering, and you don't know what to do. You start going up. You're the spokesman for God. Why do I have to go up? Because you're the one that's going to get the message. You're the one that's going to deliver the message by the anointing power of God. And what will the response be of the people? It'll be miraculous. Lives will change. Situations, conditions that were absolutely impossible that if it hadn't been for God's intervention, they'd be in heaven today. But they're here today in this room because of somebody prayed. Somebody spoke a word of faith over them. Somebody had heard from God. Somebody in prayer had gone up to the mountain. Thank you, Lord. And met with God. When Moses came down after that encounter, and the Lord said, I want you to say this to them, and I want you to say that to them, he was just a spokesman. He, he, was, he was not depending on his education, his background. He wasn't depending on who he was as an individual, as a man, although he was a great leader. No one doubts that. He wasn't even depending on that. He was depending on what God would tell him to say to the people. And then he was depending on God to carry out what he said after he said it. And his face shone, and he spoke as a spokesman and an oracle of the living God. Thank you.